Welcome back to Unapologetically Woman. We're celebrating phenomenal women all across Kentucky who make no apologies for their perspectives or the impacts that they're making in the community. Today, we're celebrating the Nancy House. Nancy is an attorney and partner at White, McCann, and Stewart. Unapologetically Woman, Nancy House, that's you. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me here. I'm so excited to be here. Well, we're excited to celebrate you. So we're just going to jump right in. Okay. Let's learn about your, your journey. Okay. Have you always known that you wanted to be in law? From the time I can remember, um, I actually, it's a funny story. I actually remember being in a car with my mother and a cousin. And uh, the cousin said, so, I was about five years old. She said, so, what do you want to do when you grow up? And I was like, I don't really know. And she said, well, you get to be a doctor or a lawyer, pick one. Oh, you only get one, two choices, right. that's it. And I literally said, well, which one has to go to school longer? And she said, the doctor. And I said, well, okay, I guess I'll be the lawyer <laughs> oh, then. That's and how so we're choosing. that's just been it from the, from the get-go. Um, and I, I love to speak publicly, um, and I love to get to know people and different people and different things. So it all just kind of worked out. And so once you left your little five-year-old mind and you started going on your journey, you first graduated from Transylvania University. I did. Tell us about that. Um, I had a wonderful experience at Trancy. Um, it was good for me. I'm an only child, um, and I'm from a small town, so it was good for me to be somewhere small. Um, I don't know how I would have reacted to go to a big school right away like UK. So Trancy was great um, for me in that regard. Um, and it introduced me to lots of things that I had never been introduced to before. I made wonderful friends. Um, I met a lot of people. I learned a lot of things. I had a great experience at Transylvania. You were involved in a lot of things on campus as well. I was. Um, I was on the dance team. Um, I was on... Um, you don't get to say I was on the dance team and move on. <laughs> That's You don't get to do that. Tell us about being on the dance team. Oh, it was fun. I did it in high school. I did it at Trancy. Um, we went to national competitions. We just had a really good time. Um, we always did our best, but we just had a really, really good time. Well, that's that's the best part of being in yes. college. You go to college to study, but you want to have a good time while you're there, too. And so you were the chief hearing officer. Tell us about that. For the Student Judicial Board. Yeah. Um, it's something I started, or I, I was on the Student Judicial Board um, shortly after getting to Transylvania when they had an opening, and I just remained on it. Um, and then later, um, my senior year, I became the chief hearing officer of the Student Judicial Board. Um, and so whenever a student would violate a rule, um, then they would come before us, um, Judd Board, we called it. And so they would have a hearing and we would determine the outcome. Was it kind of like practicing or pre-practicing? We would, we would hear from everyone and we would hear all the evidence. So, so yeah, in that regard, it definitely was. We listened to everyone. Okay. So you listen, you made your decisions, and then mm -hmm. who got to tell the person what the outcome was? We generally told the person right then. Okay. Very, very serious things went on to the administration and the president. But generally, for most things, we just told them right then. Okay. But being a leader is nothing new to you. You've been doing this your whole life. And at Transy, you were orientation leader? I was. I, I, I was. And that was wonderful. Um, and really, the best part of being a leader to me, and, and especially there, was meeting all the different people. Um, still, to this day, that, that's why I love being involved in things. You get to meet so many people who do so many different things, who do things that, that either I've never been exposed to or have never done. And so that, that's my absolute favorite part, getting to meet all the different people. And you're very busy all around town. You're everywhere. So when you say that you like to, you know, meet people, you really take that to heart. I really, really do. Um, I think it just, um, it honestly makes me a better person. You know, the more people I know, the more people I get to know, the more things I'm exposed to, um, the more things I can learn from other people. Um, that's probably my favorite part. There is never a dull moment um, in my life or in my personal life, in my um, professional life, there is never a dull moment and that's the way I like it. What's the best advice that you've ever received from someone? Just be good to everybody. Just simple. Just be good to everybody all the time and give everybody a smile all the time. Okay, so while you're smiling, you're working your way on to the University of Kentucky's Law School. Yes. Tell us about that. Um, so from Trancy, I went to UK Law School. It's very scary. UK is not scary, but just the prospect for anybody going to law school, the entire prospect is very scary. Can I do this? What's this gonna be like? The unknown, the fear of the unknown. But it was wonderful. I had a great experience at UK as well. Um, I'm still so close with so many of my classmates. Um, some of the professors there, 
Um, I've remained very close with some of them. Um, it was just a great experience there too. And so while we're on our journey to find ourselves, mm -hmm. there are a lot of bumps in the road. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you face some of them. Mm -hmm. You know, what did you do to keep going when you face barriers you that made you question yourself? Maybe, am I good enough? You you just keep going. You you just say, I'm I'm going to do this. I'm going to I'm absolutely going to do this. Like no matter what. Um, so in 2012, I was in a very very serious accident. Um, and and I can remember when I woke up, I can remember thinking, I'm going to do this. I'm getting out of here. I'm going to do this. I'm going to get up, I'm going to walk, I'm going to do everything that I did before, I'm going to do it, and I'm going to do it better. And, and so that's what I think you have to tell yourself, I'm just going to do this. You set your mind to it and you just do it. How long were you hospitalized? I was in the hospital for probably two or three weeks and then I was at Cardinal Hill for another three three-ish weeks. Mm -hmm. how, did, how did that experience, not just with, I'm getting out of this hospital, I'm going to do this, how did that play into who you are today and how you make your decisions and things like that? Um, it helped me learn empathy a lot. It really helped me learn um, a struggle. And, and you know, it's not the same struggle that everyone may have, but it was a struggle that I went through. So when I see other people who are having a similar struggle or even if it's not similar, it's just a challenge they have to overcome. Um, I can relate to that. I can relate to that a lot better. And does that help when you're practicing the law? Absolutely, okay. absolutely. Because all of my clients are going through the worst day of their lives because I do mostly family law. So, you know, it's usually the breakdown of a family. I get some adoptions, which is a happy time, but usually it's people who are going through one of the roughest times in their lives. And so that helps me understand, um, you know, they're going through something difficult too. And so I have to be there for them to help them learn how to get through that. I would think that that could be emotionally taxing as well. Yes, yes, it definitely is. And so what do you do to, um, to make sure that your, your mental health is right intact? Um, again, I, I keep up with, with my friends and, and doing other things to benefit others. Um, and just making sure that, that I know and that that client knows, whoever that is, knows that there, there's something on the other side. We're going to get on the other side. Um, and that's what I always keep in mind. But then, you know, I, I like to surround myself with my friends. I like mm -hmm. to laugh. Um, so, so that's kind of how, trying to keep a balance, trying being the operative word there for me, <laughs> but trying to keep a balance. You also advocate for women. Yes. You, why is that important for you? It, partially because I am a woman, mm -hmm. um, but I feel like in advocating for women, um, for children, for everyone, um, I'm advocating for everyone. You know, I, I just want everyone to have a chance. Um, not just women, but primarily women because I am one. Mm -hmm. But yes, in advocating for women, I just want us all to have a chance. I want us, want us all to be there and have opportunities. And you are really big on opportunities, too. You're on the board at the Chrysalis House. Yes. And I, that is about opportunities. Yes, I'm the president of that board. And again, th those are women who, who have just, you know, life has taken them on a different journey. Um, and it's our job. It's my job. It's everyone's job at the Chrysalis House. It's the entire community's job, you know, to help them and to help everyone who's, whose journey has gone off, gone off in a different direction to help them get back on track to be part of their support system and their net of people to catch them. Because you know, when you think about it, we're all really one bad decision away from our journey going in, in a different direction. That is exactly right. Also, you work at the well. Yes, yes, and that's really new to me. And so that's something that I'm just becoming involved in. Um, and, and I'm on that board, but um, I also am a guardian ad litem for children, um, and I've done that for years. And it's it's scary to see what can happen right here, right here in Lexington, Kentucky, that we don't even think about uh, about the trafficking um, with children, with women, um, with everyone. So um, I'm very grateful to have the opportunity to be involved in that and to learn more about that and to help the community learn more about that. How do you feel when you have really helped someone out of a desperate situation? What do you think about when you lay down at night? I'm just very thankful to have been given the opportunity to do that. 
and, and, and in those opportunities comes a support system. You talked yes. about your friends and what about your family? What kind of support system do you have to help you do all of these amazing things that you're doing? Well, my family is wonderful. Um, my mom and dad are wonderful. Again, I'm an only child, so I have a very small family. My mom's an only child, so it's small on that side too, but I have lots of cousins. Um, that I grew up with, and really my friends are my family, too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I think of my friends as my sisters. And I think you have a very uh, deliberate friend group. Um, yes. When you're, looking, when you're looking for friends, who are you looking for? Um, people, not people who like the same things that I do, but people who like to get out and who like to do the same things I do. Um, even if it's not, again, the same things, they just like to be out and doing something, mm -hmm. something to help other people, something positive. Um, again, and I think that net is such a great thing. You know, I learned that in 2012 when I had the accident. I was so blessed to have this huge net of people, and so many people don't have that. Absolutely. And, and that's what we need to help make up for. Absolutely. And so your work doesn't stop. You are one of the busiest women that I know. You do a lot of work with the Junior League as well. Tell us about that. Yes. Um, so I have been involved with the Junior League since I think 2006. I chaired the Holiday Market Committee. I've been on a million different committees. And I was the president in 2019. Um, and then I chaired the committee um, that, that helps give out the grants because we give $30,000 grant every year and then more than that on different special years. Um, and so this is the first year when I'm actually what's called a sustainer. So I'm kind of retired, still a member, but kind of retired. And that's been a big adjustment to not, not have that monthly meeting to go to, not have that necessary obligation. So that's been a huge part of my life. Well, what makes, you, what makes Nancy the happiest? Oh my goodness. Um, seeing a job done, or mostly done, that makes me the happiest. When a case is done, or as done as a case can possibly be, mm -hmm. um, and everyone can move forward, that makes me the happiest. Being with my friends and family, that makes me the happiest. Being with my cats, at home. You've got that two. Me, Do you I have, have two? two? I have two. What are their names? Leo and Lizzie. Oh, that's adorable. Yes, they're the sweetest. Are they rotten? Yes. Okay. Yes. Something tells me that they would be by the number of pictures I see of them. They are. They're precious. Mm -hmm. I could sit here and we could go on and on. But before we end today, first I want to thank you for allowing us to celebrate you because mm -hmm. the work that you do is amazing. But for young girls and young women that might be looking and thinking, gosh, I wonder what it would take for me to be like Nancy. What kind of advice would you give them? Um, again, just be kind to everybody. Um, take the opportunities that, are, that you're presented with. Um, and if they aren't there or you don't know how to get them, ask someone. Um, because that's something that I have had to learn. You, ha you have to ask people because um, most people are willing to help you to open that door. Mm -hmm. I know that I'm definitely willing to open doors and do whatever I can do to help whoever. So be positive and work for them. Um, hard work um, is a necessity. So yeah, be, smi be happy, smile, and just work for whatever you want. Thank you so much. It was great getting to celebrate with yes. you today. Thank you so much. You guys continue to watch as we celebrate other phenomenal women just like Nancy House who are changing things in the community. We'll talk to you soon.